and welcome back to another Coffee with Laura. I am so happy to be joining you all for coffee today on this wonderful Thursday. This is actually a interesting topic to talk about because we hear certain verbiages all the time and it changes as we grow up. I mean, I can't ever recall hearing the word mindset when I was younger, but now it's kind of like a hashtag word. Same thing with like self-care, you get the idea. But the idea of being fat has been around my entire life and I'm guessing same with yours. And if we look back to even uh, some old advertisements, I remember being in college and looking at what people used to do for exercising and it's, it's quite comical if you want a good laugh. Um, but we get this feeling and we get hooked on a feeling sometimes of I'm fat, which is an identity. I am is an identity statement. So you're identifying as a fat person, but do you actually fit the mold? So bear with me. Let's take a step back and actually think about this time and time again. I'm sure this has happened to you. This is what I encountered as a trainer. Clients would set a goal. They want to lose X amount of pounds and we got to work. When we change their lifestyle and help them reach the goal, they got there, but they didn't feel satisfied. And quite frankly, even 20 pounds, 30 pounds, I had someone lose 70, even 100 pounds, and they still identified as fat. So then how can you still identify as fat when technically the metrics aren't true? Like your BMI is not in the fat category, your body weight percentage, body fat percentage, all the above aren't technically in the classified fat categories, which I'm not a big fan of those to begin with, but just for argument's sake, they aren't even there, but you can still identify and feel fat. So are we actually using the right word? So here's what it, I think it sounds to our mindset. So what is a mindset? Let's start there to really understand it. Our mindset is ultimately our programming. It's conditions, beliefs that we adopted, familiar language that we heard, and we learned what certain sensations are and how to label them. So when we were growing up, we learned what happy felt like, what sad felt like. Probably when your parents said something like, oh no, are you sad? And you're like, yeah, you don't know if you're sad, but because they named it for you, now it's sad. But what if you were actually feeling frustrated? I mean, I'm not blaming the parents. That's an impossible job. It's our job now as adults to ultimately decipher that language for ourselves. My point being, you're learning throughout your entire childhood what things are according to someone who's not in your body or in your brain. And then you adopt that as your conditioning, your programming, and you live your life with that understanding. So if you grew up with a parent who body shamed other women or who you heard saying negative things about their own body, you learned certain things about your own body and you adopted the same type of thought pattern and language and you practiced it and you practiced it and you practiced it because you probably heard your friends doing some of the same stuff and then culture was doing some of the same stuff. And what do you know? Now you have a belief and a feeling confirmation from your body that you are fat and that just becomes the automatic pattern that your brain gets hooked on and you just keep thinking that and thinking that and thinking that. So you could lose 100 pounds and you would still think I am fat to the point. There's a book I was reading that was talking about how plastic surgeons did the plastic surgery and people would still feel like they had the big nose that they previously identified with or they would go through gastric bypass and still feel overweight and feel like they were fat despite losing 300 pounds. Even when they physically had the changes, if the mind isn't changed, your body can't really digest it. So you can achieve whatever goal you want. You can lose all the weight you want. If your mind's not along for the ride, you're going to stay stuck in the same old mind wanting the same thing in a totally different body. And that's ultimately what creates body dysmorphia. Because you can start as an overweight person and lose 100, 200 pounds to be super, super lean 
and still want more because you're expecting something when you get there based on what we believe in culture. It just doesn't work like that. So if we take then a backward step to the whole feeling of fat, like I said, our parents, our culture, our friends, they influence our feelings and how we interpret our feelings and the concepts that we come up with. If you hear someone always saying that they're stressed, you adopt stress when sometimes you just mean you're busy or you're preoccupied or you're uh, unorganized. These are common words that we use that mean something totally different, but we use them. And when we use them incorrectly, we can't really do anything with it because our brain doesn't know what to do with that. I had a client who was telling me that she feels fat right when she wakes up as soon as she has coffee. So the only time she doesn't feel fat is right when she wakes up before coffee, which for coffee drinkers, you know, that's not very, it's not very late in the day. It tends to be pretty early. As soon as something enters her body, she feels fat. Isn't that just the feeling of food? And that's the whole point. Like we can feel food. There are certain foods that feel heavier. There are certain foods that feel lighter. That is really what we need to pay attention to. To the point, the mistake I made as a, previous fat kid is I used to do exactly what I'm talking about. I'm fat. I'm fat. Anytime I felt like I ate something where I overate or I was bloated or I was uncomfortable, my brain went to I'm fat, which is not actually correct. A more accurate statement would be, mm, I ate too much or, Ooh, that ice cream was not sitting well. That makes me feel bloated. Not I am bloated. I feel bloated. Very different identity versus feeling. I know it seems super particular on the outside, but in the brain, it does a lot of stuff. So when we're feeling, are we interpreting the feeling correctly? I'm going to suggest you're not. And if every time you eat something that makes you feel icky, you have the thought, I'm fat, you're definitely not. Because a more accurate statement would be, Mm, that didn't settle well. Maybe I'm intolerant to that, but we don't like that idea because we get addicted and hooked on food. And trust me, I boycotted nutrition and food for five years before I finally accepted. It's kind of like part of this. And I mean, five years, like in my professional career, like the first 20, I definitely boycotted it as well. Point being, we're hooked on old programming, old thoughts, connecting an identity, having these automatic thoughts creating a war within ourselves that isn't accurate. So the way out is to change our thoughts. Because again, you can lose all the weight, but if your mind isn't there, you're still not going to be happy and you're still going to feel like that old fat person and you're still going to want to do it. So we have to start with the mind because I'm fat as a mindset, just like I'm stressed. Any identity statement that you feel like you live in that's an identity statement. That is a hooked mindset of practice thought that you've just been practicing over and over again because of the meaning our culture attaches to it or you attach to it in general. So how do you do something different? Okay, you're hearing me. You're like, all right, Laura, I'm picking up what you're putting down. But these thoughts, they come up. I don't even know if I think them. They just, they just, they're just there. You're right. Your first thought, you're not going to be able to do much with. It is automatic. It is practice. It's been conditioned to you for probably decades. But your second thought, that one is all you. And it's actually a funny game I play with my husband now because I went on our first uh, tropical vacation where I was in a bathing suit and I didn't say I'm fat once. And it wasn't until the end of the vacation. He's like, do you realize you haven't said that? Did I say I feel bloated? You bet. Did I feel like, say I feel puffy? Mm -hmm. Because those were accurate statements. But I also knew, oh, I overate here, or I ate this sweet, or I ate something that I knew didn't sit well with me. But it was vacation, so balance. But I understood the actions I took that made me feel what I felt. It wasn't, oh, now I am fat. To the point, at Christmas, I, I slipped. My automatic first thought that had been there, it came up and it was, Ugh, I'm so fat. And literally my husband pointed at me and I'm like, no, I feel bloated. And we literally laughed at each other because he knows what I'm working on and he helps me catch my thoughts. It wasn't, I feel fat. That was just familiar and automatic. So when you have the first thought, 
and you notice that I'm fat mindset popping up, stop yourself. Be like, wait, no, that's a signal. Go back. Did I eat too much? Did something not sit well with me? Did, uh, was I stressing while I was doing it? Did I eat, uh, a complex of, you know, certain lectins come like combine? Was there not enough protein? Was there too many carbs? Like the... Start with, did I eat too much? And then was there something that made me feel icky? If you can start to understand what foods make you feel icky and then know, doesn't mean you can't have them. It just means you're aware. Oh yeah, when I have dairy, that makes me go. Okay, you can still have dairy, but then you'll know. So then when that future I'm fat thought comes up. It's no, I had dairy. That's what that is. Okay. The shame goes away. The judgment goes away and you actually get to learn and remember, right. That's why I don't like eating that because it makes me feel kind of icky. Does it mean you're never going to eat again? No, it's just a choice of when you want to feel icky. How you change the I'm fat mindset is by recognizing a it's practice thoughts and B Catching the first one, changing it to the true statement. I ate too much. That didn't sit well. You get the idea. But for so long, client after client of mine, myself included, suffered with I'm fat and felt shame over it. And I have good news. It's not true. It's just that you're feeling your food, which is a good thing. You just need to interpret it differently. So... Here's what I want to know from you guys. When you are eating something that makes you ping the I'm fat thought, what do you learn? I want you to comment this week what you learn. And if you are ready to truly change, I encourage you to go to my website and join the five day free self care challenge so you can get that mindset shifting in the right direction from the get-go as your body changes but it all starts at the mind people anyways that's all i gotta say thank you as always for joining me and i look forward to seeing you next week